honestly, I have no, I have no idea what to say. First, a disclaimer. This is unscripted and probably going to be unedited too, but I just saw the fucking episode and I need to, I just need to talk about this. Okay. Ooh. First of all, this show is fucking awesome, okay? And uh, here's the thing, um, I'm an avid fan of Game of Thrones. I haven't read all the books or anything like that, and um, I just know that I just know it through the show, and I and I follow the show regularly. And here's the thing, this this episode, I don't know whether you guys in the U.S. were late getting it, but we were about a week late getting the episode. I don't I don't know why, but um, yeah, we didn't get it until this week, so basically it took a week off. And, um, and I was pretty late watching it. I, I was busy with other things. I didn't get around to it. But I read the Facebook comments. I read my Twitter comments. My cousin came up to me and he just said to me, Hey, you watch Game of Thrones? And I was like, no, no, I haven't watched it yet. No spoilers. He was just like, and I, I, I don't know how, but I knew somebody died. I think I saw it on Facebook. Someone basically hinted at it, but I didn't spoil it. And I was just like, oh, does anyone relevant die? Because, you know, if, any, if you know Game of Thrones, people die all the time in the show. Like, But mostly it's just like irrelevant side characters. And he was just like, yeah, but I'm not going to say who. Some, some relevant does die, but I'm not going to say who. So I had an idea going into it that oh, someone was going to die. I was not fucking prepared for the Red Wedding. Oh, man. First of all, the episode in general. I like the episode in general. Uh, I like the part with Arya. I like the part with Bran. And, you know, Jon Snow, he's awesome. He's a badass. But, uh, first of all, before I, get in any, go, before I go any further into this, if you're a Game of Thrones fan and you haven't seen this episode, if you haven't seen the season yet, don't watch this video. I'm telling you right now, do not watch this video. Because I'm just going to go balls deep into this. It's still fresh in my mind. That's why I'm doing this now. It's about 3. It's 10 to 4 in the fucking morning. But, yeah, I just... Uh, I I don't know what... I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. But basically what happens is... Um, uh, I think... Uh, Rob Stark's uncle... He's getting married to um, one of the fry chicks. I'm not sure what house they are. But I think it's House Fry. And the dude is like really old and decrepit, but he's still an asshole. Like Rob Stark's girlfriend, like he's asking her to approach, uh, come forward, and um, he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're like under that robe. You're tight and blah blah blah." Just being a poor and being a dick. No pun intended. But he presents his daughters or granddaughters and, and, you know, they're nothing special. I wouldn't say they're ugly, but, you know, nothing special. And so, you know, he's like, he's like being really nice, like presenting his daughters to him and, you know, being a bit of a smart ass. I know not to trust these people. I don't know, I don't know what it was exactly, like the way... Well, obviously the way he's just like, oh, your, your girlfriend under that dress, I know what she's like, I would have fucked her a thousand years ago when I was young. You know. But even then, I was not prepared for what, what was going to happen. And, um, you know, you go through the other stuff, the stuff with Danny Targaryen, who was my favorite character on the show, but I barely remember. I, I remember what happened, but it's nowhere near as vivid. <laughs> That's what happened with um, the Red Wedding. So yeah, um, the wedding is taking place and uh, the daughter that comes along, she's way too pretty <laughs> for this guy to just be handing her over to the Starks. And there's that air, there's that tension, there's a vibe where you know, Jesus Christ, you know you're on edge. I was on edge the whole time. I was like looking around like, 
something, something shifty right now. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. And, you know, everyone else is like, you know, just drinking, having a good time. And then one of the guys, I forgot his name, but he's basically in connection with the Lannisters. And he's just like, he won't drink, which is, which is already a sign of um, suspicion. And he's like, yeah, I won't drink. I won't do anything. I'm, I'm just going to be sober. And I'm just thinking, huh, that's kind of odd, like, drinking, not drinking at a wedding, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much offensive. So, um, yeah, everyone's having a good time, you know, Rob's talking about, um, his son and what they should name him, and I'm just like, uh, no, I don't like this. Not that, not that he was talking about his son, but you know when they talk about stuff like that, it's going to lead into something bad, especially with Game of Thrones. So, um, he's just like, uh, I really, I really want to skip ahead, but, to get in, in context, but, um, basically they have the ceremony and, um, basically they put the robes on each other, I think, that's basically... You may now kiss the bride, that sort of thing. And then they get carried off. And I'm not entirely sure what, what's happening. It's like a... Uh, I forgot what ceremony. It's a um, cer uh, bedding ceremony, that's it. To consummate the marriage. And um, Rob Stark's girlfriend, I've forgotten her name, I'm sorry. But she... Her face explains it all. She knows something's not right. She knows... That there's something fishy going on. And um, eventually, like, when they when they both leave, conveniently, that's when shit starts going down. And um, Lady Stark, uh, I forgot her name too. Sorry, my memory is really fuzzy with, <laughs> with names and stuff. But um, she reveals, like, that he's wearing... Um, I think it's me to an armor, but everyone else is like, yeah, the gloves are off. Shit is about to go down. Everyone's getting shot with arrows. They're getting their throat slit open. Not only in the room, but outside the castle too. And um, basically, yeah, uh, uh, Rob Stark's girlfriend, he, she gets stabbed in the womb. So she dies. The kid dies. And... Um, Rob Stark gets shot with arrows, but he still he still survives. I think I'm not sure how. And Lady Stark survives too. But yeah, everyone's getting attacked, and Arya <laughs> escapes death once again. They killed the dire. They killed the dire wolf. That pissed me off in season one. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think maybe the most effective part was killing the dire wolf, cause Jesus Christ, man. But yeah, they killed the dire wolf, and eventually, when everything sort of settled down, uh, they start grabs um the guy's wife, uh, Fry's wife, and um she is like he she holds um a knife to her throat and says, "Just let us go, just let us go. We'll forget any of this shit happened." If you just let us go. And um, in the aftermath, Rob Stark stands up and he's just like, he's just with he's like, Mother, what can I, what is there to do now? His, his girl's dead, his kid's dead. And he just accepts it and just, this guy comes up to him and he's just like, the Lannister just send their regards and, then, and just stabs him and, ugh. I'll admit, Rob Stark wasn't one of my favorite characters, but I, I liked Rob Stark, okay? I got attached I got attached to his character. I thought he I thought he was a strong leader. But yeah, uh, just shit happened before and um you know, letting Jamie Lannister go. Letting um I think uh, Lady Stark um, accused Tyrion Lannister of something basically just been doing bad things and 
just one thing led to another and another and another and another and this is they this is the price they pay. And that was just for me that was just powerful. The way Rob Stark when he's showing he's such a good leader, he's strong, he's independent. And for him to just stand up on his own two feet and just be like what else is there? What can I do? There's nothing for me around here anymore. And just accepts getting killed and uh, just see just to see a character so strong, just broken down until he feels like he's nothing, and eventually he's just killed. Uh, good, great acting, by the way. <laughs> but Lady Stark, she's just like. She still wants to get out of there, but at the same time, you can tell she's acting on instinct in a way. Like, she doesn't, she knows that, you know, this is it. Even if they do get out of there, what's next? What can she do? Like, Ned Stark is dead. She doesn't know where her kids are. Sansa Stark is married to Tyrion Lannister, uh, Tyrion Lannister I should say. And just, the way she's just like, well, if I do, I can tell she's thinking, well, if I do get out of here, what, what next? They're going to come and get me eventually. There's no point in even running. But I think she, she tried to look strong for her son. And just, uh, and it was great to see that after the tension between the two. Ooh. But yeah, she gets killed and credits roll. Stark silence, no pun intended. Uh, I'm not even sure what to do with this shark. To be fair, Bran and his little brother are still alive. Barely. Arya is still alive, but we got a long way to go before there are any threat to anyone. Oh. God. It's just one of those things. I don't know what to think right now. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. It's just... Oh my God. And the thing is, if anyone has seen Game of Thrones, you know how brutal this series can be. Bloodshed, that's nothing. You know. TNA, that's nothing. Balls, cock, Nothing. Speaking of which, what happened to Theon Greyjoy? I, I've actually kind of been looking forward to his part for a while now. I don't, he's, he's going through hell. I think he wants to die. He's been going through hell, but yeah. The, the point is, this is just a whole nother level of brutal. And anyone, anyone who, is, who is watching Game of Thrones right now and, you know, has watched this video up until this point and doesn't give a shit about spoilers. It's more power to you. Fair enough. And even even that, I can't describe how brutal this is. Just, you know, the air, the atmosphere, the tension, the setup was just magnificent. The way, the way they, because you know not to trust these characters, a lot of them. And you know that something is going to go down. But you don't know when and you don't know how big it's going to be. But trust me, when it hits, it hits. And when it's, and it is fucking huge. When it does. Uh, this thing was so big, like, people were talking, like I said, people were talking around Facebook. I had a friend of mine who was trying to get into season one. <laughs> she was just like, oh yeah, I, I see everyone talking about Game of Thrones. I want to know what it is about. Honey, you have no idea. <laughs> and even there, I don't think she really understood it. But I just wanted to come on here. I just wanted to talk about it while it's still fresh in my mind. And oh, just wow, fucking wow. Because the thing is, how did the Starks come back from this? Because if you really think about it. Ever since Ned Stark died, it's about like, oh yeah, we're going to stick a sword in King Joffrey's throat, blah, blah, blah. 
And now that any Stark that's a threat to the Lannisters is dead, who does that leave? I mean, we were with the Starks from the very beginning. From frame one of this show, we were with the Starks. And now they're dead, you're thinking, how are they going to, where are they going to go from here? Like, who is going to take the Iron Throne now? And like I said, Arya and, um, Arya and Bran and Bran's younger brother and uh, Sansa, they're no threat to the Lannisters, at least not yet. Uh, the only thing, the, the character I've been rooting for this whole time, Khaleesi, uh, Daenerys Stormborn, I've, I'm solidly behind her now because, yeah, she's the only one. <laughs> she's the only, well, only good guy, I, I guess, that can come along and say, yeah, I'm still around, I got my dragons. Yeah. But, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say. It's just, the show, this fucking show. Like, I'm probably going to be thinking about this for weeks from now. I can't wait for the climax. I don't know how they're going to top this shit. But I do get the feeling someone is going to rise up and... Jon Snow, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, I was speechless. Like, I had my jaw open and just Johnny Bravo started just dropped to the ground. Because it was just so powerful. But Jesus. And also, if you're thinking about watching this without without watching the other seasons, don't do that. Because it's not going to leave any impact on you at all. You're just going to think, oh my god, a bunch of people are getting killed. You won't think anything about it. You really need to get invested in the show. You need to get invested in these characters. In order to appreciate them and just to appreciate how powerful this shit is. But yeah, there was, there was a point actually. I think Christian from Schmoes know he brought it up and um, yeah, where were the other the other two? The the uncle he got taken out with a betting ceremony. That that could probably be revealed next week. But um, yeah, he was nowhere to be seen. The other guy was nowhere to be seen. So I'm thinking he was in on it. And I'm not sure, but yeah, he he brought, he brought up a really good point about that, and I figured I'd bring it up here. But, yeah, ugh. I don't know how I'm going to sleep, though. Because <laughs> I'm just going to be thinking, oh my god, what are they going to do? How are they going to come back from this end? What day is it, Thursday? We don't get we don't get Game of Thrones until Monday, I believe. And then Tuesday goes on, uh, Sky Go, that's what I watch it on. But, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about it. Game of Thrones, you did it again, you did it again, Whew. I'll see you guys later.